we'd like to thank the organizers of this conference. It's been a lot of great and enlightening talks so far today. So um, I'm Liz Davidson, and I'm here with Zara Amazari. Um, and today we're going to be presenting joint work with Bishwa Dipte and Naomi Leonard on applying contraction theory to study cluster synchronization of networks of diffusively coupled nonlinear systems. Um, and as we've seen in several of the slides before, um, we have uh, synchronization is a very common feature in many natural systems. Um, in particular, we're very interested in how synchronized, synchronized activity plays a role for brain function. Um, in particular, uh, excess or too little synchronization can cause debilitating, debilitating brain disorders such as Parkinson's disease and epilepsy. Um, if we have a better understanding of conditions where synchronization is guaranteed to occur, that has the potential to inform things like identification of system structure, the ability to make testable predictions, improvement of existing ex efficacy metrics, as well as understanding existing techniques such as deep brain stimulation. Um, so today we're going to start with a few definitions related to synchronization in nonlinear systems and sort of set up the system and what we're going to be talking about today. Um, then Zara will talk a little bit about contraction theory and give you some background on that um, and show how we apply it to find sufficient conditions for synchronization, particularly cluster synchronization. Um, finally, I'll wrap up by giving some examples of where we can apply this theory, um, in particular to networks of neuronal oscillators. Um, so I'd like to start with some definition, definitions. Um, to begin, we consider for the course of this talk synchronization in the exact sense. That is, if you have a group of systems, their dynamics will be identical after a certain um, transient time. Um, we would also like to define cluster synchronization, which is where you can partition a graph into k groups such that systems in one group are synchronized with one another, but they're not synchronized with any other group, systems that are not in that group. Um, the network model that we consider is a set of n nodes, which are represented by the yellow ovals here. Um, and those nodes each can have a lowercase n dimensional dynamics, um, the dynamics represented here. I would like to draw your attention to two components of this equation. Firstly, the diffusion matrix D represents a diagonal matrix that indicates which dimensions of the dynamics are coupled. So for example, in this, exam in this example here, um, only the first states are coupled, which is a common characteristic of many um, neuronal oscillator models since the first states typically represent the voltage dynamics of that neuron. Um, secondly, the uh, gamma ij's here represent the strength of coupling between any given oscillators in the network, um, and those can be used to form a Laplacian ma matrix in the general sense. So now Zara will go through some background on contraction theory and show you how we find our sufficient conditions. Hello, uh, thanks for coming to our talk. I also would like to thank the organizer uh, for organizing such a nice uh, conference. So I would like to talk about contraction theory, which is <clears throat> the methods uh, are very old and they are traced back to the work of Lewis in 1949, Dahlquist and Lezinski in 1958, and recently Slotin and their group brought this into the field of uh, control theory. So we say that a, net, uh, a system Z dot equal f of Z is contractive if any two trajectories uh, converge each other exponentially and with no overshoot. This means that if they start from um, a distance u0 minus v0, then uh, the distance between the initial conditions would uh, decrease exponentially uh, uh, over the time. So uh, next, I would like to introduce uh, a very important tool in contraction theory, which is called a matrix measure or a logarithmic norm. Suppose that you have a finite dimensional norm to vector space over R, the real numbers or complex numbers. We can think of Rn and some LP norms uh, on Rn. And uh, we have the usual induced operator norm uh, of uh, any matrix in this norm space. Uh, defined here by, by the supremum of norm of Ax divided by norm of x when x uh, is non-zero. And um, next we define a matrix measure, which is in fact the directional derivative of the operator norm in the direction of the matrix A and evaluated at uh, the identity ma uh, matrix. Uh, I, I would like to use uh, this definition here, the matrix measure, uh, to show the contractivity of uh, z dot equal f of z. So we say that if there exists a norm, let's say uh, x norm, uh, 
such that the logarithmic norm of the Jacobinov f at evaluated at any state z is non is negative, then this then the system is contracted. So intuitively, this is the der the derivative of uh, the operator norm. So if the derivative is negative, then the the norm would be decreasing. So this is the the, the intuition of this theorem. And sometimes people call uh, this um, negative quantity being uh, infinitesimal contractivity. So infinitesimal contractivity would imply contractivity of this system. Now I would like to generalize this result to a network of, uh, oh, sorry, before that, let me give you a, a numerical example. Suppose that we have a linear system d dot equal a z, which a is uh, a two by two matrix here. I would like to find a norm such that the logarithmic norm of this matrix is negative. I choose uh, an L1 norm, which is defined to be the sum of the absolute value of the entries um, of a vector, and for this specific norm, and some other norms like L2 norm and L infinity norm, there are some uh, very nice explicit closed formula for the logarithmic norms. So here, um, for this matrix, new uh, one, the logarithmic norm induced by uh, L1 norm is, um, so you go through the columns, you add the off, off, on diagonal entries plus the absolute value of off diagonal and take the maximum. And in this case, it is negative, uh, so the system is contracted. So just note that <coughs> logarithmic norm is not a norm, so this could be negative, uh, but uh, and it's unlike the operator norm, which is which is a which is a norm and it should be positive. So I, I like to um, I like to um, generalize this condition for a network of um, a system. Suppose that we have n um, n nodes which have identical dynamics and they are connected through an arbitrary graph with the visual matrix C. Then if there exists a weighted LP norm for any p between one and infinity such that the logarithmic norm of the Jacobian of f at each state is negative, then we have contractivity. So we can use the same um, condition to show synchronization of this system. Uh, and the reason is that synchronization is a weaker condition, a weaker result compared to contractivity. So contra contractivity always implies synchronization. But the point is that here in our condition, we only use the dynamics of each node, and we don't uh, bring the role of the structure of the graph and the diffusion metrics. So let me give you an intuition uh, example here. Uh, suppose that we have two, um, two identical linear systems which are connected to each other, and let's define this change of coordinates. So we have, we, by, by this change of coordinate, we can decouple these systems, y and z. Um, so the stability of the whole system uh, preserved if both a minus 2d and a are Horwitz, but here for synchronization we, aren't, we really don't need the stability of the second system, so the stability of the first system would be enough. And this is equivalent to say that a minus 2d is Horwitz, so, so here you see that the condition not only depends on uh, the dynamics of each node, but it also depends on the diffusion matrix C and the dynamics of, uh, and the structure of the graph uh, which is represented here by the second eigenvalue of the Laplacian of the graph. So uh, back to the uh, to the network of uh, of the nodes, uh, we can use the same condition, the um, the logarithmic norm induced by a weighted L2 norm of the Jacobian of f minus lambda 2d, which here lambda 2 is again the second eigenvalue of the Laplacian graph. So if this quantity is negative, then we have synchronization. So I would like to generalize this to uh, uh, to a network of heterogeneous uh, uh, systems. Suppose that we have uh, we have n nodes, but in this uh, in this group of uh, in this network of n nodes, we have k groups c1 to ck, which have which, which have the same identical um, uh, intrinsic dynamics. So here, for example, we have two groups of identical uh, dynamics, and in addition to this assumption, we assume that um, we assume cluster input equivalence condition, which says that each each node in each cluster receives the same amount of input from um, the neighboring clusters. For example, here, this blue triangle receives the same amount of input from 
the orange uh, cluster. So using this condition, we can show that um, our synchronization manifold, which is defined here and is equivalent to the cluster synchronization, uh, is invariant. Now suppose that we have a graph G. So this is our graph G. Uh, and this can be decomposed into k plus one graphs. So k graphs uh, are related to our uh, k clusters, and one graph is, is related to our interconnection uh, graph, which interconnect the uh, the clusters. So our uh, our condition here uh, depends on the dynamics of each cluster, which is the Jacobian of f uh, of each cluster, and the the second eigenvalue of uh, each graph in each cluster, which here is shown by lambda sub CR2, and lambda bar is the second eigenvalue of the interconnection graph. So if there exists a weighted L2 norm, such that the logarithmic norm of this matrix is negative for all clusters, then we have synchronization. Okay, so, um, so this is our main result here, and um, Liz will talk about some application of this result. So yes, I'd like to talk about an application of this theory to a particular neur neuronal model, the Fitzsimagumo model for membrane potential dynamics. Um, and this is a second order reduction of the Hodgkin-Huxley model. Uh, it consists of two equations. The first is a fast equation with um, that sort of represents the voltage, and the second is a slower equation that represents the gating variable. They're separated by a time scale parameter epsilon. Um, so if we apply the theory developed in the previous section to this model, or to a network of these models connected via gap diffusive coupling, um, we get a sufficient condition in, on the overall coupling of the matrix, which we denote as gamma. And that is, again, in terms of some model parameters, as well as the structure of the cluster, of each cluster, and the structure of the interconnection graph, G bar. Um, this value, this Sufficient condition can be minimized for a particular uh, value of p. Um, and this provides an improvement over conditions found using Lyapunov functions to prove stability of cluster synchronization. Um, so now I'd like to provide an actual numerical example of a cluster synchronized graph um, where we can apply this sufficient condition to say things about the uh, properties of the clusters. Um, so by filling in the uh, model parameters here, we can find a sufficient condition that now we've written the sufficient condition in terms of the overall coupling, as well as the uh, second smallest eigenvalue of each cluster and the second smallest eigenvalue of the connection graph, of the interconnection graph. Um, and we provide a schematic of the graph that we show an example for. Um, however, in this numerical example, we consider this graph with 50 nodes per each of these clusters. There is one cluster that consists of a cycle graph where each node is connected to a central node. And that central node, in turn, is connected to each node in a complete graph, which forms our third cluster. Um, we can compute the second smallest eigenvalues of each of these clusters, as well as the second smallest eigenvalue of the interconnection graph, as follows. And these can be combined to give us values that we can then compare to the sufficient condition to see whether we are guaranteed synchronization. Um, so in the first case, in the complete graph, we are guaranteed synchronization since this value is larger than the sufficient condition we found. And, and uh, in, so we do see that that uh, graph does Sorry. In the second, the second, uh, second cluster, we see that this value is smaller, which actually gives us no uh, result because um, our, our condition is sufficient after all. Um, we see that indeed, the um, second cluster does not synchronize. Um, okay. So in conclusion, we have shown that contraction theory can be used to find sufficient conditions for synchronization, which has been studied very well before. Um, we have extended this using cluster input equivalence to find sufficient conditions for cluster synchronization. And in particular, we've applied our theory to find conditions where synchronization can be guaranteed in systems of neuronal oscillators, particularly the Fitzsimagumo model, um, with heterogeneous dynamics. However, our theory is generalizable to any, um, any nonlinear system. Um, yes, and our next steps are including seeking extensions to approximate cluster synchronization, which is sort of relevant to 
a few of the last talks um, where the clusters are not, they don't satisfy that exact synchronization um, guarantee that we uh, required in the beginning. So thank you very much.